Here I have a 2004 GMC Sonoma SLS and today I will be reviewing and telling you about all the quirks and features that this little tiny thing has. When I bought it, it had 146,000 miles and right now it has 155,000 miles and counting as the miles are gonna keep ranking up. And I, well, I just wanna do a review on this little thing before it keeps getting worse and worse. So this GMC Sonoma in particular is the second generation that started in 1995 and ended all the way in 2004. Starting in 2001, they started introducing the crew cab models, which, you know, you still had the ability to buy the single cab or the extended cab, short bed or long bed, whichever was your choice. And starting the year 2004, you can only find the crew cab model. These also share the same platform with the Chevy Blazer and the GMC Jimmy. And obviously we can't forget about Oldsmobile Bravada. Now this truck falls in the category of compact pickup trucks. So this competed with the Toyota Tacoma, the Nissan Frontier, the Ford Explorer Sport Track and the Dodge Dakota. But those two are mid-size pickup trucks. Yeah, those also compete with this thing as well. Now we have the LS model, which is like the basic model. And then we have the SLS, which is the one that I have here that you can add more packaging to it. You know, like the leather seating that I don't have or the power seats that I don't have or the sunroof that I don't have. You know, the little things that matter in life. And then you have the ZR5 model, which is the off-road package that they had you know that just had a different differential it had the big zr5 sticker that's so important that you have to have and um, yeah it just had a what a 1.5 two inches factory lift so which is always nice and it had like a roof rack and and I think it had more bars in the back somewhere. That is the ZR5 model that I don't have. But I do like the design. I do like the style of this GMC Sonoma. Uh, comparing it to the Chevy S10, the hood has two lines on the sides instead of the one in the middle like the, the S10 has. So that gives it a different cue and different look. I honestly like that. The bumper in the front, the lights and the grill are obviously different. They're going to say GMC. It's the little things, you know, that, that, that they change with the S10. If you see, the wheels are also the GMC Jimmy style wheels that they all come with. So this is the one that comes from factory. It's an alloy wheel. This did not come with the roof rack uh, model on top. Like I said, this is the SLS, which I honestly like. I think it's a cleaner look that way without it. And I like that it doesn't have the running boards. When I bought it, it didn't come with it and I'm gonna keep it that way. I think it looks a lot better that way. Just simple, but at the same time, it just looks a little aggressive in my opinion. What I do like about the styling of this truck is the fact that it's more squared. It is not bloated. It's sleek, it's slimmer and boxier, more American, I could say. So it's not bloated like the newer trucks are nowadays, but I do like the styling, you know, the sides, the bed, all the little things that makes this a Sonoma. It's, it's nice, I do like it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do love this truck dearly. And I plan on keeping it as long as something else doesn't keep breaking because these things have a tendency to keep breaking one part after the other. And once you fix one thing, another thing goes wrong. But the engine's solid, I'll, I promise you that. The engine's solid, it's just small things that keep coming back and annoy you. The other thing that I wanted to point out is the size of this bed is odd, it's very small. Now, you may be thinking, well, there's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, there's the thing. If you're planning to buy a truck to utilize the bed a lot, this is small, this is four and a half. You plan on buying a truck cap or a Tanau cover, whatever those weird names, Tanau, who named a ton of who. Besides the point is that you won't be able to find them easily because of the size of this bed. I had to repair one because mine broke off. I was going 50 miles per hour. My dad didn't clip on the things like they were supposed to and he didn't tell me about it and I was driving and the whole thing just flew right over and it broke and I had to repair it because buying another one of this thing is nearly impossible and if I do find one they want $600. But if you just need a bed because it's a bed and you can put small stuff in here like a toolbox or a jack or some wheels or just everyday little things that you wouldn't really care about, then this is perfect. I even have a measuring tape ready just to show you if I measure it for you. Just to the crack of this thing right here, where the bed is, it measures 55 inches and a half. Yeah, there we go, 55 and a half right there. And if we measure it on the side, it reaches just merely Magical number of 56 and a half. Yes, 56 and a half inches wide. Now, if we measure it with the bed or with the, whatever, the tailgate down, it has, there we go. Now we're talking, see? With the tailgate down, we're measuring about 75 and a half. Yes, sir. 
That's the size it should have been to begin with, but it didn't. There you go. I'm not saying it's useless, but I'm just trying to emphasize that this thing is small and it's odd, like very odd. Like it sticks out, like you can tell it's odd. You park this thing next to a GMC uh, Canyon or a Chevy Colorado, it sticks out a lot. Now, if we look down here, next to this thing right here, where my license plate is, you will find a hole. You start rotating it to the left, so that way your tire, your spare tire will start falling down or dropping down, and then you tighten it to the right to have the spare tire jack back up. So it's a, you know, it's a, a cool little thing in case you didn't know, I didn't know, but now I know. So I look at other trucks to see if they have it, which I'm pretty sure they do. So there's a little hole and you slide in the thing, just rotate it and well, the tire just, just starts falling down. Now in the interior of this GMC Sonoma, it's the same like the Chevy Blazer. There's nothing different. It's, it's the, virtually the same. This is very 90s look, it's rounded. They work, it just works a little bit better in my opinion. I just like the styling of this interior. It does come with some downfall and that's the material that they use in these things. I mean, this is Chevy in general. They've like, like it's plastic. So the quality could be better. It's hard plastic that they use and it's cheap plastic with UV rays and everything. It just brittles the plastic down and it, it just breaks and it becomes fragile. And it's something you have to worry about. The good thing is right here up in the dash, it's made out of this rubber foam stuff that, you know, it could possibly warp with more time, but it is at least it's not hard plastic. So you don't have to worry about it breaking yet but it still has you know the hard plastic like for example the speaker grill up here it's plastic if you were to slam that i guarantee you, you will break it because i've done it before now talking about comfort i am very comfy in this i'm only five foot four so i am very short and i'm a little dough boy myself i'm not very skinny but i'm not very big either so in terms of space and comfort you're you're very it's very comfortable in here i'm not gonna lie to you the seats are cloth they are manual seats these chairs, I think they're mostly in the later models, but I think I've seen them too in the earlier models of Blazers and GMC Jimmys and all that. In terms of practicality, it is very practical. Here, normally you would have the CD changer or the, or the cassette player or something that's up here. But no, here we have enough room and space for you to store stuff. Here we have our cup holder with this removable rubber things. I do have what appears to be a cassette storage unit thing. So I only use it to put my phone in and like hand sanitizer and stuff like that in here. So I don't really use it for cassettes, but it does have other uses for it. Here we do have a coin holder. Uh, you can put quarters, nickels, and dimes in here, which is very useful for back then when you were crossing a major toll place and they, you needed coins and stuff like that, which nowadays they automatically just sent you the bill. Looking in here, you do have enough space in the center console here. Uh, it's very deep, but it's not wide. So, you know, you can put some stuff in there. I think you can put, you can put some tablets. You can put like an iPad. Looks like it's big enough for that. You can remove this if you wanted to. Mine, I guess you can remove it if you wanted to, but you know, you can remove it. It is a removable thing if you wanted to. It's not that hard. So you can hide some stuff in there if you like to or whatever. You do have some storage on the side of these door panels. You have uh, what appears to be like a cup holder thing that you can put on that side if you wanted to some hydro flasks, maybe if it's big enough, you can probably, or small enough, I should say, you can fit it in there. Looking here at the glove box, you don't have any room besides your manual and your registration. It is very tiny, I'm not exaggerating, it's small. In here, we have a little cigarette charger port and a cigarette lighter, if, you, if that matters. We have the ashtray that's removable. Again, if you smoke, which nowadays I think everybody just jewels, so you can put your vape pins in here. Now, these do have power windows and power locks. They're very plasticky and bulgy. It's very convenient. You forget these little things when, you know, nowadays all cars have that. But when you're out looking for an older car, you forget how convenient that really is. It does have power mirror adjusters and it does have the little uh, defroster thing, which is pretty cool. So that way, if it's frosted or whatever, you can, you can turn it on and it'll melt the ice away, which is pretty cool. I think it's a, it's a neat feature so that way you're not out there scraping and damaging your mirror. Looking here at the center, we have our two vents for the air conditioning and heating. You have your little knob here to close the vent if you wanted to. We have the center entertainment, which is just a CD player and a cassette player, which is very useful. I do use this Bluetooth cassette thing in here, which is very, very convenient. So I just have that in there. We also have our climate controls down here. You have your fan control, your temperature control, and your 
AC and heating and defroster and all that little things. It's very GMC and bland, but it's good. It works. Looking at the steering wheel and at the dash, it's really simple, very GMC. I, I like it. I personally like it. The small, simple design. It doesn't have any controls on the side or anything. It's very GMC and simple. Um, even the dash, you know, it just has the important stuff, the RPM, the your speedometer and all the other gauges that are important, like the gasoline, the fuel, the temperature, the oil pressure, the battery voltage, all that jazz. It, it has it, you know, it's simple. It, it works. You have your lighting controls on the side, it does have automatic lighting. If you didn't know, the automatic lighting works based on this little sensor that's right here on the passenger side. I didn't know that. I thought it was just a little nub. I would always mess with it as a kid and my mom's blazer. This does have four wheel drive as the 2004 models and all the crew cab models only come with a V6 engine, the four wheel drive and an automatic transmission. You can't get these with the four cylinder or with the manual transmission or two wheel drive. No, these come loaded like that. Now the cool thing with this model too is that the roof is different. The design is more edged. It's more defined. It's less rounded. It's more aggressive. I believe late 2003 and all 2004 only came with this style of roofing. The other cool thing is up here too, you have your little, your directional and your temperature. That's all that's up here. It does have these little lights that I do like. It reminds me of an airplane because you get to adjust it. It has a nice little swivel that you can point the beam of light to your liking. I don't know, wherever you want to aim it to. You have your little uh, compartments up here. Uh, this is for your remote, for your garage that you can install. This is for your sun. You know, your sunglasses and all those other stuff. And this is just, well, I don't, honestly, I don't even know what this is for. You can't really put anything in there besides cards, I guess, maybe? Get, I, I don't, I really don't know. If anyone knows, please let me know, because I, I don't, I really don't know. But overall, you know, compact size, this is a compact truck. It's, it's nice. I do like the size. For me, it fits fine, but if you're a little bit on the bigger side and taller side, you might have an issue getting in and out of this thing and just being in here overall. But I, I do like the styling, the interior, the the everything you know the door panels it's just something i'd like i guess it's nostalgia really because my mom had a blazer as a young kid and so i do like everything that this blazer looks and the way it is that's you know that's what these cars are for they they're utilitarian but at the same time they just bring nostalgia to them now sitting back here in the gmc sonoma it is very comfortable um it is sits very high compared to the two front seats you have plenty of headroom for me that is now if you're tall, like I said, you might have an issue, and especially if your passenger in the front is very tall and they have the seat all the way to the back, the seat will touch your knees. You know, the seats are cloth, they are comfy, they're the same material as the seats in the front, so, you know, there's nothing different out here in the back. You don't have any cup holders in here, I'll let you know that right now. You do have these two little uh, spaces here in the front for you to put things in here if you like papers or a folder or whatever you want to put in there anything like that really there's only a storage container right here like a storage side thing on the side, the door uh, it does have cigarette ashtrays if you you know an ashtray it does have that on the doors and if you look at the doors they're more rectangular shaped they're there's just a big rectangle on both sides it's literally a door if you look at it uh, this thing there's just a little plastic thing here I don't know what's it for I guess for another cigarette uh, ashtray i think i don't know it just there's another piece right here that's just there uh we have the sliding window back here that you can just slide right across uh you have that thing if you also wanted to you can also fold these seats front but you won't fold them very far driving the gmc sonoma it's pretty cool it's uh it's a truck you know i cannot complain about it the visibility could be better um naturally you just sit a little bit low i don't know why if it's the seats just the way if they've compressed over time the cushion material or it's just the way the the seat is just positioned you sit a little bit low just a little bit from here to here is my visibility and then from there to here it's all material it's all steering wheel all legs thighs all of that it could be better when you're on the passenger side it's perfect you're you're sitting up a little bit higher if you have power seats, uh, you can easily adjust that. That's no problem. But usually, you know, you, you desire the little bit. Now, if you're taller, you might not notice that. Me being 5'5", five five, I wish I'm just this little, just a little bit like this. Like this isn't perfect. Normally, I have a little pillow that I sit on top of. Gives me the extra space. It feels natural. It feels normal. 
But when it comes to the visibility for the side mirrors or windows, I should say, it's perfect. You know, like how I'm sitting right now. Without the pillow, it's fine. The handling of this GMC Sonoma, I mean, I'm doing a U-turn right now in this back road and it's fine, you know, it's it's pretty good. It does, you know, it's, it's a compact truck, so it's not gonna give you a lot of problems when it comes to that. Um, so it's fine. Turn radius is fine. The handling, now typical, this era of GMC and Chevy, the steering wheel has play to it, not a lot. Usually when it has play, it's your tie rods that are going out. But even if you replace tie rods, sway bar links, sometimes it's just the just the rack and pinion that just has a wiggle. I, I don't know why, it just does. It's, it just has some play. Now I'm not saying it's dangerous that you're gonna have to recorrect it every, I mean, if you, if you gotta recorrect it a lot, then you got a lot of things going on in your suspension, honestly. But you know, it could be a lot better. But you know, this is just typical GMC Chevrolet type of deal. It doesn't, you know, it, it could be better is what I'm saying. Now, wind noise, because it is a compact pickup, you can still hear the, the road noise with the tires, you know, you can still hear it. Um, right now it's a very windy day. I can hear the wind inside the cabin. It's a little noisy, I would say, but again, it's just this era of GMC that is just how it is, you know? Now, the suspension, it's it's smooth, but it could be smoother. Again, it is a pickup from this era, 2004. So it, it's not gonna be the best luxury suspension. I mean, you can see the poor cameras vibrating like crazy because it's mounted on the dash right now. So. It could be better. I don't know if the 2003 models came with the four disc brakes, but this one I can guarantee you has them. It has the four disc brakes. When you don't have the ABS light on and the brake lights on, because when your ABS is not working, both of them will turn on or just your ABS will turn on and then your brakes and then they'll start flashing. When the ABS module is not working correctly, you will only feel most of the power of the, the braking power being done in the front discs. When the ABS module functions like it normally does, you will feel the rears as well. Like it stops, it's it's perfect, it's beautiful when it stops. Like it, it literally, it, it stops quick. But when it doesn't work, I'm not saying you're gonna die, no. What I'm saying is that you will notice the slack it has. So the two front brakes are the ones doing most of the work anyway. But when the ABS module is not working properly, you won't feel much, if anything at all, from the rear disc brakes. Acceleration being the 4.3 V6 and being what? If I do the math here real quick, 16, 17, it's an 18 year old engine. Um, it's still got some kick to it. This, like I said, this truck currently has right now 156,006 miles on it. Um, it's got some acceleration. We'll give it some gas here. 2,500 RPMs, we're at 20 miles per hour. Still climbing 2,000 plus RPMs, we're 35 miles per hour, just shifted. 40 miles per hour, we're going 45 right now and we're approximating into a stop. We're at 50 miles, 2,000 RPMs and we're gonna hit it. This is me braking normally. and. I just let it off a little bit. It breaks fine. It does the job, you know, it does it. Go ahead, Sonoma. It, it'll do it, but when you're carrying weight and trailer, you, you wanna stop sooner. I mean, that's just obvious, but again, you when you're carrying that type of stuff and weight, just break ahead of time. You, again, you won't die unless it's slippery and you're distracted with your tender feed and all the other stuff and your YouTube notifications of Doug DeMiro and Speed Street 717 vehicle conversions or sending that one Snapchat to that one girl that never snaps you back. Um, you know, it you, you will cause an accident. So just pay attention. If you're a single guy, single girl, or just a dude in general who just wants a truck, dude or gal, who wants a pickup without the pickup, this is the truck. Why? Because it's still, talking about the crew cab model, because you still got space to put stuff in the back. You still got room for friends to come in you need a haul mulch or pack of whatever, a sixer, you can put it in the back. Literally, you have room for this. Like, it, if you're not gonna tow or nothing, you know, this truck is perfect for the suburban area, city area. This is the perfect truck for you because it's a convenience. I mean, I like having the four, door, four doors. My siblings hop in here. My friend like just walked in and out of nowhere. I can put stuff in the back if I need to. It does the job, you know, it's a perfect. It's not wide, it's not too long. It's not exaggerated to drive. 
My friend owns this 2006, 2008 uh, Chevy Colorado, and he likes it. And he didn't think he'd like it. I mean, he, he likes it more now that he has it. I'm, I've had a lot of people ask me how much I would want for this truck. You just don't see many crew cab models like this in this size anyway. Yes, the bed's useless. It's four and a half foot. You're not going to use this for lumber. You're not going to use it to tow plywood or anything like that. No, you're not, you're not doing that. You're, if you just need it for basic needs, you know, you want a truck without the truck, this, this is the right truck for you. If you're going to be hauling or towing more than 6,000 pounds every day, don't get this truck. You're just wearing it out faster than it should be. If you think this is a perfect landscape vehicle, you know, f five adults in this truck plus a trailer with 6,000 pounds, you're going to kill the truck. You might as well just go full size. Don't even get a truck like this. You're going to wear out the suspension, the transmission. You're going to spend more time in the shop for little things that could have been avoided because it's not meant for that. So that's who I think this truck is for. I honestly love this truck. It reminds me a lot. It brings me a lot of nostalgia because my mom had a Blazer as a you know childhood growing up. Now that I can own toys, this is perfect. I love this.